Hi, so this is Akash Gautam, and today we're going to talk about React Router DOM, the latest version, version 6, and exactly what it is, why is it necessary, and why, like, there are so many options to use from, and why this one is the best one to choose from. So let's get it started. So the first thing, as, as you're already here, so you already know, uh, React, the way it works is, it's a single page web application. So it doesn't change much when you change the URL or, or something. It only depends on the way how you make the components, how you make the website. Uh, uh, what is routing in React? So the way React works is, uh, as React is a single web application, like a single page web application, so it only takes into consideration a single page. It creates a single page and it changes depending on uh, how you made the website. Now, it doesn't take into consideration what the URL or the web address of the website or in the browser is. So to tackle that, that thing is called the routing, to change the web page depending on what's the uh, URL address of the pages. So there are many different ways to handle routing. There's a recently launched new hook called uh, use routes, which is sort of easier. But if you were to build a production, like a production size website, a proper website, which will have a lots of users and a lots of different pages and, and URLs, doing that with a simple use routes hook is like it will be difficult it's a very simple tool for learning how routing works and what everything is but to actually build a proper website a production level website you will need to use the routing provided by the react router dom it's a third party uh, it's a third party package the way to install it is just to do npm i react router dom and it automatically downloads and installs everything and every dependency that is there is. There are two versions of it. Like the React router is the first package that is required. Now, if you were to change this in the websites, or if you are using the React web version to create websites, then we need the React router DOM. So it can manipulate the websites and the URLs of the website. But if you are using it, let's say for a mobile application, then we'll need the native version. So that is a different package. But if you were only using, using it for the website, React Router DOM, just install it and it will automatically install everything. Now the way to use it is just to, like it's very simple. It's a tag, you put the link in the tag and then you put what element you want it to show. And that's basically it. So now let's just start on the examples and see how it goes. So this is just a test application and you don't need to worry about what this component is. I'll just close it. So I'll just give you a quick overview of what this is and how it works. So it's just a simple website. Let's remove this and go to the home page. So it's like this. So it has a navigation bar and three options, calculator, the to-do list, and a to-do list with a different theme. So I've made it. If you click on calculator, the URL changes. And depending on that, there's a calculator component to that is shown. If you click on to-do list, a to-do list opens. And if you click on to-do list custom, it's a simple to-do list with a different theming and it shows that one. So, but how is React doing that? And why do we need to change the URL? See, we can also do this without the URL change. Click on this button, this component will open. Click on that button, that component will open. But to make the things simpler, as like now, even if the user, let's say, it, it shows what it is. So three different pages, three different completely different type of components. So three different URLs. Now, it, this is a very simple example. Let's say there were some complex applications. So let's say, uh, let's take Flipkart for example. So it doesn't, so it takes some sort of data. So if you go into cart, it searches up your backend or the servers and like picks up what is there in the, what have you selected? What do you want to buy? And it gives you some options. Then you click on buy and the URL changes to the buy options. It shows you the options. It shows you, and all those options take some sort of uh, memory or data from the database. So that's also why your like your code needs to know now like what to do when to do like it won't start asking the user like which uh, card with like with which card you will buy or which UPI you want to pay that will only come after the user has done everything. So URL like routing in URL sorts of divides everything into smaller chunks and it's like it's better for the website as well as the way you program your website also. So it depends on both of things and using URL, it will be a lot of easier. 
like this is a very basic example obviously so it doesn't have to do anything with the memory i just wanted to show how three different urls uh like can show three different components so let's say all uh, let's say all three of these were three different uh components like this calculator instead of calculator it could have been a card instead of of to do list here it could have been uh, let's say a component and this to do custom list let's say it will have an individual uh, value of everything like which product you want to buy so each three of these will have to take a different function like we'll have to run a different function to get different types of data from the server and then depending on that they will do that so instead of clubbing everything into or into a single page we like to divide our stuff so it's easier for us to program and it's easier for the user to see and to like and it's also easier on the browser to handle because if every everything is running together the website gets slow and nobody wants that so let's look at the code now so this is the simple code the way to create any sort of routing this is the one of the basic routings uh, you just have to install this react router dom package and the way you can do it is just npm i react router dom and if you click enter it will automatically start now because it's already installed in mine i won't do that and i'll just show you what's there so this is a layout of how to do it let's comment it out first okay so the way we do it let's comment out everything and start from scratch okay so now first we need a router tag this tag incorporates everything about routing now right now routing has two three different types of ways and it gives you functions to take advantage of them uh, one of them is routes like this route here that's commented out it tells the react program on this path go to this element or you can nest them and create some sort of private and public browsing because if the user is logged in you don't want them to see the login page again or the sign up page again and if the user is not logged in you don't want them like to see anything data like if you are on twitter and you log out you the twitter won't allow you to see any of the tweets or like message anyone or dm anyone or follow something so these are some of the things you kind of want to restrict the user so you create uh, different sorts of elements and you can do it in a nesting sort of way i also will show that but first let's show a basic one so this is a, a router tag inside is is everything related to routing so first we create the routes tag and inside this routes tag will be our links to every page that we want to let's say if i click on a button and i want it to take me somewhere it will have a link tag now we can also use an href tag which is uh, mostly used in the websites and in most of the web pages but as this react router dom already gives us a link tag it's a sort of inbuilt function so it's faster better and it incorporates with the whole routing much more easier than the href tag sometimes that could have issues but it's better to use the link tag if you are using routing now inside this let's say i'm creating a route so i'll close i'll close it and then inside this route what i want is my if my path is let's say i want to go to the calculator one so my path is this now i need to specify the element so my element should be as i've already imported the element i'll just write it here this calculator one so now what it does is if i click on if i go to this link calculator one it will take me to the calculator path now let's check if it's working so right now let's go to the home page see it's taking me to the calculator path okay so this one is working so our route is working and that means everything is fine now but because there is no buttons so we can't navigate from here to there and to, for that i've created this a simple navigation component is just a header with three different links for calculator to to do list and another to do list now you can do it with a button you could do it with a, any other tag just whatever you're writing if you use the link tag there whenever you click that thing that after the click it will redirect you to this page 
that is the purpose of the link tag. We can also use navigate, but that has much more benefits than the link. So we'll talk about it later. Now coming back here, let's import. And because nav, like this component, does not have anything related to the routing, it just has links. So we will not put it inside the routes tag. I'm sorry. It will be outside the route tag, but it will be inside the router tag because it's still related to the routing that we are doing. So now a new line and we'll just import our component here and that's it. So now when I go to the website, we can see these lovely made navigation. So if I click on cal calculator, it shows me calculator. If I click on the to-do list, it shows me nothing because there is no routing for that yet. If I click on the other to-do list, it's still nothing. So we'll come back and we'll add these two just like we added them. So route path calls to do custom element for that. We import it to do custom and done. Now our second routing is is finished and let's write a third one and because i'm lazy i'll just copy paste it here and edit it so this is done and this is done so everything is done we can delete this previous code and everything should work fine now just one thing i forgot to tell you i'll tell you again because i'm using the vs code so it's importing everything obviously but we need to import them because see if i remove this line it will it will not run so when you are using direct router DOM, we'll have to import a router, route and route as as the router. I mean, we have to import browser router as router, routes and route. And with that, we'll have everything done. And these components are your own. So if you're creating custom components, please import them. If you're not creating custom components, you don't need to worry about this. And let's see if our website is working or not. Okay, so calculator is working, to-do list and to-do list custom is also working. So this is everything about the basics of the React Router DOM version 6. And there's two or three more. So this is it about the React Router DOM. These are all the basics, how you can create routes. This is the way to create routes. You select a path and you choose the element you want to show when the URL is that specific URL. And this is sort of how you create the links. Now there are other ways to do it. One is the navigation. One is to use outlets when you have a lot of different elements. Let's say if I had uh, a page here and this page was sort of a restriction to check if the user is logged in or logged out. So inside it, I could write each of the different functions or components and those components can be used by using outlet. So that is sort of the function of outlet. And I think everything is done. So if you like, like if you enjoyed the video or if you learned something new please like and comment thank you